Hello, my name is Marko Keskinen. I'm university lecturer at Aalto University and its Water and Development Research Group. And with this presentation, I'm going to tell you about sustainability. And uh, you can here see some links that provide you more information on the, on the topic. And at the end of my presentation, I also provide you a link to this very presentation where you can then delve deeper into some of the aspects I'm not going to tell you uh, during this presentation. And the presentation is based on, on the few key uh, publications that I've mentioned here related to sustainability and sustainable development. And I do recommend you to, to read those and other material as well. Okay, let's start. So, talking about sustainability, in practice we often interchangeably talk about sustainable development. And I also do, do use them quite interchangeably in this, in this presentation, although there are differences. Well, to start with, it's a very broad topic. Uh, and this presentation provides us my take on it, some synthesizing thoughts based on some uh, research I've been doing and some readings I've been going through, as well as some teaching on, on the very topic. And the idea is actually to provide you some ideas how sustainability as a, as a kind of word or theme or concept could be generally categorized and analyzed, what it really means, how to really look at what are the aspects, the key kind of aspects and, and dimensions of sustainability. And then really around, along, along those meta themes tend to think, you know, what it really means when we talk about sustainability, whether it's sustainable development, sustainable growth, sustainable energy systems or something else. Obviously a disclaimer, uh, this is my possible view. I'm happy to hear what, what you have to say and, and also recommend you to read other material on the topic. So to start with, the first meta theme or dimension is a, obviously a scale. And scale has different aspects into it. The first one is the time, and let's start with that one. So we often, when we talk about sustainable development, we talk about intergenerational equity, which essentially me means that we meet our needs without compromising the ability of our future generations to meet theirs. And this was, of course, the underlying principle in the Brunland Commission's report, Our Common Future, back in 1987. But the time has also another aspect that I argue is important, and it's, it's a kind of an equation where the past and the present equals the future, which means that when we understand today requires understanding of the history, where we, how we have come to this very point we are in time. It also means that you know, we need to understand today to propose a sustainable future actions. So we need to know where we are at currently to understand what kind of actions are needed when we look towards the future. So that's the time scale related to sustainability, meaning we have different time perspectives in it. There is also a place uh, scale. It means that there are different uh, kind of scales, locations at which sustainability can be looked at from global to regional to national to local scale. And all scales obviously matter. It's not to say that one scale is simply more important than another in terms of sustainability. But it's good to know that the scales are usually nested, so actions and impacts do sum up from local to higher levels. Interesting also related to this is to remember the so-called north-south divide when we talk about a global scale. So uh, this interesting double triangle figure from, from Gates et al. Uh, provides a view on how sustainable science looks from north, global north and global south perspective. There are quite interesting aspects there related to, for example, how affluence and poverty are driven and how causes and impacts of climate change are divided and how also theory and action are, are, are different. Of course, this is rather simplistic, but I would argue that it's more correct than wrong, and in that sense it's, it's useful also as a food for thought to think what it really means when we talk in terms of sustainability in, in different countries and regions of, of the world. Um, 
I give you a couple of questions to think about during this lecture. And the first one is really to think about why sustainable development has emerged and whether it's really a more about the bottom-up process or top-down process, and why would that be? So how the scales are linked and, and which way around the sustainability kind of uh, emerges and, and shows or manifests itself. This is for you to consider and think. Um, so that was about the place. And while I say that all scales obviously matter, ultimately I argue actually that it's the scale of sustainability, if you wish, is our globe, the Mother Earth. This is because everything is connected at that very scale or, if you wish, a system. When we talk about natural flows, we talk about energy, carbon, climate, water, all these are ultimately linked at the global scale. When we talk about social flows, meaning people and their ideas and cultures, again, in a globalized world, they are linked at the very level of globe. And ultimately also the economic flows, the trade of goods, trade of food and so forth, again, linked at the global level. And this also means that all actions at the lower scales have an effect at these global scales as well. So while saying that these different scales are nested and all are important, I think at the ultimately when we talk about sustainability and sustainable development, we always have to maintain also the global scale in our analysis and thinking. So, and interesting when we talk about scale, I've now included time and place, is also to note that they are in a way, of course, connected. And uh, this uh, diagram from De Vries' book on sustainability is really interesting because in a way it shows the here and now and elsewhere and later division and, and also in a way links to the very challenge of sustainability, I would argue, that often our actions tend to be here and now, whereas they often have implications elsewhere and later. And obviously the, the key in sustainability is then to actually kind of uh, bridge those two points and think how, how those actions could be sustainable uh, and equal in, in all those scales. Let's then move to the actors. So when we talk about sustainability, of course, it means that there are actors who are doing the sustainable acts and actions. And uh, there are obviously a variety of actors from public to private sector, from civil society to academia from individuals to groups and different organizations and groupings, whether it's a nation states, uh, private entities and so forth. Uh, but often when we talk about sustainability, and especially at the global scale, the nation states are the key. So the countries and their governments presenting their people. And related to this, another question for you to think is that if and when the sustainable development is very much state-centered, as also manifested by the very fact that the United Nations obviously builds on the operation of his mm -hmm. nation states. United Nations mm -hmm. have agreed the sustainable development goals and so forth. Is it really a threat or an opportunity for sustainable development? What it really means that it's so state-centered concept? And what would be actually the situation without nation states, without country borders in globe, whether we would be more sustainable or less sustainable than we currently are? Not an easy question, but I think it's a very relevant one to think when we think in terms of sustainability. Let's then move to the themes, and I would argue this is actually something that very often think people start to think first when they think in terms of sustainability and how to categorize and, and think about it. So ESE, environmental, social, economic issues, this is the kind of three aspects that are often considered to be in the very heart of sustainability. There are, of course, other themes possible. Quite often the culture has been mentioned to be missed or somehow underrepresented if it's to be included only under social dimension of sustainability. But the interesting, here, interesting thing here is not really about the themes themselves, but how they are actually related, how they are kind of, how their relations are described and understood. And there are, of course, different ways to look at it. Here are some examples. There is a triangle with kind of equal balanced uh, presentation of all these three themes. They are kind of nested concepts where the environment is the biggest and under that there is a social and then ultimately economic as a kind of under social and environmental uh, thing. And then quite often, of course, the sustainability is looked at with this kind of 
three uh, uh, spheres that are all partly overlapping, where they're all the three uh, spheres coming together, where the sustainability and sustainable development occurs. But again, the interesting thing is here that there are different ways to do this. And one exercise and food for thought would be to think how you think current world actually operates, how these three themes are connected and which one possibly is more important than the other. Related to these themes, there is of course also the concept of boundaries. So essentially sustainable development and its themes rely on the access, acceptance that there are some fixed boundaries that we shouldn't kind of across, we shouldn't cross those boundaries, we should keep ourselves within certain set, limited set of boundaries. Obviously this is something that could be contested, but, but it's quite often understood as a basis for sustainable development. Uh, often they are physical, environmental, planetary, because we have one planet. So that's a very kind of uh, understandable boundary to draw that our planet and the global scale is the boundary at which we operate and look at sustainability. And, and I very much resonate with this idea. And related to that, of course, there is this uh, concept of planetary boundaries proposed by Ewan Rockström and others already back in 2009. It has, it has been revised and revisited after that. But it's an interesting concept to look at the kind of really critical drivers that are underlying our uh, human existence and how we are actually crossing many of those boundaries already now and how we are about to cross those boundaries. And this, of course, makes a very big challenge for sustainability. Okay, so I have now run you through to three meta themes or dimensions that I argue are very critical in understanding sustainability. Scale, including both time and place, the actors, so those who are actually doing uh, the sustainability and sustainable development uh, discourse forming, and then, then those three themes and their relations and the related boundaries. As you may conclude, uh, it's a bit diverse, it's quite complex, it's a bit fuzzy and vague. And as such, I would argue, it makes a perfect boundary object. A boundary object is a kind of a object which is very plastic or kind of fuzzy and vague, but at the same time robust enough so that they kind of everybody find a common ground. And this is something that I think shows in the real actual actions of sustainable sustainable development and our discourse and uh, discussions around sustainability. So everybody is basically for sustainability, but with their own terms. So they use the vagueness of the concept to kind of, to use it in such a way that they find their own kind of actions justifiable also from the point of view of just uh, uh, sustainability. And this is of course something that makes sustainability as a concept very attractive, but also very uh, challenging. So how really to find that common ground and, and go around that uh, fuzziness and vagueness. But coming back to these three key elements, my final question for you would be, what is missing from here? And uh, that's something that in a way underlies everything and turns the whole picture around. So that's the values. So, so the values that we as a people have uh, related to our, or what we value is, is important and common. And this is something that, that is not often remembered, but actually it underlies, for example, the Millennium Declaration of the United Nations. So there is a kind of common values that were recognized that they are the foundation why we have uh, had this Millennium Declaration, why we have millenn set Millennium Development Goals, now Sustainable Development Goals. Again, the questions, of course, can be asked, you know, who really define these values and are they really common for everyone? Could they be contested? But uh, but interesting thing here is also, do they really promote sustainability? You know, there is the respect for nature, there is solidarity, there are loads of good, important, value-laden concepts and values there. But but the, but the questions to be asked, you know, are these the right set of values to really promote sustainability? Obviously they most probably are, because they have been recognized to be such fundamental. 
But with these thoughts, I thank you for your attention and uh, note that this presentation and additional material available in this presentation is, is available through the link, link uh, provided in the presentation.